June 2nd. We owned Ponko for about three years, but I had known her since she was just a puppy. When a few of my high school slash college friends decided to buy a house together off campus, we knew that she had to move in with us. After all, Jake's parents really didn't have much time to spend on her after Jake's mother got a promotion. Jake himself really loved her, but rarely took her out on walks, a job which I absolutely love to do. I think I was crushed more than even Jake was when we had to put her down. I thought back on all the late night walks that we took. As strange as she was, she was smart as a whistle. Most dogs will try and pull away from you and get off the sidewalk when Ever they smell something that piques their interest. Not Panko. She was abnormally well behaved, even for a German Shepherd, and she only went where I took her. Once, she even barked at someone's dog in a backyard, and I played like we should go up to the fence and bark back, but she wouldn't even leave the sidewalk. I miss that strange dog. Jake and I recently graduated, and Francis is done with school until the next fall semester. While we look for jobs, we've been tasked with dog-sitting a black lab. Karma. She's a dog of some hippie couple that Francis is friends with. They recently got evicted, so Karma is our dog indefinitely. We just got her this morning, and Francis walked her this afternoon. I'm going to walk her tonight, and hopefully not tear up when I think about Ponko. June 3rd. Karma doesn't mind throwing her weight around, unlike Ponko. Karma has no such regard for the beaten path. Aside from that, walking the path has been very cathartic. While I drive in and out of this neighborhood every day, it's very different at night. It's peaceful. The street lights make the whole place orange and unnatural. Except for the houses, they have this blue comforting tinge to them, coming out from the windows. Graduating and moving on to another phase of my life hasn't really been depressing, but it has been boring. It's all browsing for new jobs and trying to find something interesting to do to waste the rest of the time. College was for criminal justice, and I don't want to be a cop, so the pickings are slim. Private military would also be distasteful to me. The regular military didn't treat me too well. But... Walking Karma has been a very welcome distraction from the search, so much so that I walked her for about an hour and twenty minutes. Now I can't even remember why I found it so enjoyable and fulfilling, but Karma was exhausted when we got home. June 4th. If I were to guess, the reason I'm keeping this journal is because I'm bored. That and I'm trying to find out why I'm bored and unmotivated. Perhaps documenting this will help. So today I cleaned my Glock 17 while watching a marathon of Totally Spies. It quickly became a pointless drill, continuously disassembling and assembling my Glock, continuously opening pages on illegal cartoon websites to watch a show I'd never pay to watch. The gun itself is no longer entertaining. There was a novel aspect to my Glock 17 when I first got it. It's a beautiful little piece of work. The Samurai Katana is a perfect cutting machine, simple yet elegant, and efficient, durable yet agile, arduous yet facile. If the Samurai had used pistols, they would have chosen the Glock 17. Joseph Kendo was misguided in naming his Beretta 92F Samurai Edge, but such a mismatched moniker was a rather 90s thing I suppose, so I employed some slant irony in naming my Glock 17 Room 301. Now, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, but this is the first time I've ever written it or said the gun's name. I sure do have a lot of useless knowledge in my head. It's like that Wanda Sykes joke about buying a gun. Man, if I'm gonna buy a $400 gun, I am gonna shoot somebody. June 5th. There's something so surreal about watching Totally Spies. Rewatching it reminds me why D. Tiberius uses the IP as food of fuel. Sometimes the writing in the show isn't half bad for a kid show with the whole faux feminist thing going on, but if you care about animation quality, it's pretty terrible. The first episode alludes to James Hetfield burning his arm, which is cool, but even then, it's not really worth watching the 21 minutes. Still, though, 
I can't stop watching the show out of nostalgia or something. It's more than that. It's like I'm trying to push some meaning into the show. There's something there that I empathize with or that I want to be. I'm regressing to an infantile state watching this show with a thick layer of irony to keep me from my genuine feelings. I have 301 nearby at all times watching Totally Spies just to justify my manhood. You know, now that I write that, I don't think that that's it. It's more complex than that or I'm not really seeing what it actually is. I might have been afraid to admit that I liked Totally Spies as a kid, but I don't care now. I'm a trained killer. Despite the fact that I've never actually killed anyone. The girls in Totally Spies lead such vibrant, youthful lives. Traveling for work and still learning. Making witty banter like Sex in the City characters but cleaned up for preteen girls. Saving the world while still hunting down boys. There isn't a minute in that show where they don't run into a sneak attack or a trap door. The recon and guard duty I did in the military didn't make me feel that important. June 6th. If you've ever fired a gun, you know how much power the things hold. It's hard to describe to those that haven't been around firearms. So look up the clip of the kid firing an AR on Penn and Teller's violent video game episode of Bullshit. It's not that traumatic as an adult, but being next to a gun that's fired is a realization. Even the best documentation can't capture the shockwave resulting from firing the gun, or the ear-shattering blast, much less Hollywood. There are two realities to firearms. Pre-recoil and post-recoil. The first bullet you fire is like entering a new puberty. You try and sort out all of these new emotions and thoughts. For me, trying to learn how to aim was the biggest concern. I also thought of everyone else that had ever fired a gun for the first time. This is something that all soldiers have to get used to. But my first experience with hearing a gunfire was being shot. My arm was grazed by a thug at the age of 15. At the time, I thought the traumatic aspects of the event made it louder than it actually was. I was wrong, though. He fired to get away with my wallet. I don't think he intended to hit me. He panicked as much as I did. My life didn't flash before my eyes as they say happens when your life is in danger. Instead, I thought of everything I knew about firearms, which, as a boy in America, was a lot. In training, the first shot I fired called that all to mind again. <sighs> Why am I even writing this? It's not as interesting as some make it out to be. My knees are starting to hurt pretty bad. I typically try and avoid using drugs and alcohol, but I think I'm going to break down and try and get a prescription for pain pills tomorrow. I want to keep walking karma and stay in shape. I'm going to go to sleep before I start writing more pointless ramblings. June 7th. Reading what I wrote last night proves I need to get a job. Any job. But I'm too unenthused to get a legit resume together and start filling out applications. Besides that, we're supposed to have a graduation get-together party tonight. That's a valid justification for goofing off all day. Earlier today, I found a video of Adam Savage from Mythbusters talking about myths they didn't tackle on the show, one of which was the effectiveness of gun suppressors. This of course reminded me of the first shot I fired, and then all the others. Afterwards I did some research into finding a suppressor for room 301. Hoping a few purchases would enthuse me, I splurged. I ordered a lone wolf aftermarket threaded barrel. 200 rounds of 9mm 147 grain Remington Gold Saber for off-brand magazines and 50 spotter rounds just for fun. Then I started the paperwork to register a silencer, as the government calls it. Karma got to go for a drive to the lawyer's office. I have already picked out the Evolution 9mm. Luckily, I found discounted prices for everything I've gotten thus far. These websites are like shoe sales for gun nut neocons rather than middle class women. I was thrifty in college, so I have a little change to spare. 
but I gotta be careful before I buy another Glock or some other gun accessory. The important thing is, I feel better and I'm looking forward to tonight. June 8th. Last night was great. I was cajoled into drinking a bit, but it turned out well. I didn't even wake up with a hangover like I normally do. All the friends I really care about showed up, and after everyone retired for the night, I walked Karma. She was pretty tired afterwards. If you've never cuddled a dog with your shirt off while drunk, I'd recommend it. I won't be updating for a few days. I'm waiting for my recent purchases to arrive. They should be here soon. June 8th. Never mind, something of note actually happened unexpectedly. The neighborhood watch leader came by the day asking about an alleged break-in. Apparently an elderly couple reported a break-in when they woke up to find the TV still on. Nothing else was out of place, and it seemed from Mrs. Robinson's face, which was old and grayish and kindly, with gray stiff curls beside the cheeks, and eyes that swam very brightly like little minnows behind thick glasses, that she didn't believe that there was actually any crime committed. She looked amused by the whole thing. Mrs. Robinson has to deal with a lot of senility. I made some crack about how serious her job was. She then actually got offended by it. I replied, oh no, not that, I mean the situation. We need people to be on alert when real problems come up. We can't have trigger happy people running around getting this nice neighborhood into one of those Trayvon Martin debacles. This was an obvious jab at me. The resident gun nut on the defensive. I'm tired of hearing about it. I don't involve myself in that kind of news. Whether it be gun control or not. Certainly. I'm sorry. I'm really glad that we have you doing this job. I have nothing else to do. I should bake her a cake. June 8th. I guess I was wrong about not updating for a while. Mrs. Aiken, the husband of the elderly couple which had the break-in, happened last night, talked to me while I was walking Karma. I can't remember exactly what he said, but essentially he was telling me not to be a doubting Thomas. I wonder if Miss Robinson told him I doubted the story after I put my foot in my mouth this morning. Boy, gossip travels fast. I need to bone up on my elocution before I start getting new job interviews. June 11th. All my toys arrived this morning, all at once, and I promptly tried to get my roommates to go shooting with me. I must confess, I went ahead and got the suppressor without having the paperwork done yet. Also, I've been putting off looking for a job until today. After writing this, I'm really going to start applying myself. I really needed to go shooting today to relax. Unfortunately, none of my friends wanted to go shooting. They all play shooting games and seem to know a lot about guns, but I think they're scared off by the idea of being around nutjob conservatives. They aren't as bad as most moderates and liberal people would make you think. It's like they can't see that conservatives are people too. Anyway, my new toys work great. The suppressor reduces recoil a ton, although it blasts back tons of GSR. Room 301 handles much better with the extra weight. But the most shocking thing is how quiet she is with the suppressor and the subsonic ammo paired together. I mean, silencer is a miss moniker, but suppressor might be underselling how effective the item is. Since it was some random Tuesday before noon, no one else was firing so I didn't even have to use ear protection. The spotter ammo was fun too. It's strange to say, but I feel more... useful, I guess is how you would describe it, after shooting today. The job hunt officially begins. June 12th. While I hate doing this resume bullshit, I've been happy contacting potential employers all day. Some of the jobs I'm looking into are just Anything to keep me busy, like being a cashier, but some are actually career-oriented. One job I applied for would be to be a security guard at an upscale mall. I just monitor petty theft and make a pretty penny doing it as well. Another seems even better. I'd be a personal security guard for an undisclosed person. I'd get to wear a suit and carry a gun, 
even wear sunglasses at night. I've made it through every episode of Totally Spies, and I'm back on episode 11. There's a really dumb security guard in the episode that loses track of the girls. I hope I don't end up useless like him. That'd be even worse than being a pig and handing out tickets. Clover calls Mandy a thief for stealing a wardrobe. Which is funny, as fashion is all about thievery and useless markups. I don't know really what I'm getting at here, but I hope I don't have a job where I resent the people that I work with, or that I'm around all day. June 14th. I'm scheduled for upcoming interviews at both the mall and the private security jobs. I'm obviously excited about both, but there's no point in prattling on about them. In other news, Mrs. Robinson came by to notify me about how they'll be spraying for mosquitoes tonight. She must really not have anything to do with her day. Karma can take a night off from being walked, though. I guess. June 18th. Karma's owners are now crashing rent free at some place that allows pets, so I'll be no longer dog sitting after tomorrow. Jake and Francis are mourning the loss of a pet but it's not like either of them ever paid attention to her. I'll miss her, but that's one less drain on my budget. I guess I'll need a new excuse to go walking every night. June 19th. I just got back from my nightly walk, minus one dog. It actually went well, unlike my interview for the mall. The person interviewing me didn't seem impressed with my credentials, and when I asked if I carry a gun or not, she looked at me like a nut job. It's not like I care if I don't, it'd just make the job safer and easier. I'm the most responsible person that you could have guarding a mall. The interviewer is most likely some anti-gun advocate. She had a liberal feel about her. Oh well, I might not get the job as private security if my degree isn't even enough to get me a mall job but perhaps they'll like my serious approach to security. While I was angry most of the day, the walk relaxed me to a great degree. Now I can focus my remaining energy on getting the private security job. Going shooting tomorrow should help round out my relaxation. Oh, and I put in a few more resumes for security. One is a temporary job for a pop singer coming to town. I can't remember who it is off the top of my head. Pop music really isn't my thing. But apparently they need all hands on deck, so he must be big. June 20th. Mrs. Iken talked to me a day about someone being in her backyard last night. I took this opportunity to practice making a good impression for job interviews, as I couldn't care less about the matter. She seemed pleased with my open ears. Her gripe was about some movements in the shadow of her backyard. I'm sure she saw something. We live near the woods. We get raccoons, skunks, even deers and foxes in our backyard weekly. But a human has enough logic to not move if someone is watching. She clearly saw an animal. I asked about her family for a bonus round of trying to leave a good impression, and when I heard her story I felt bad. The Eichen's children, both of them, died in accidents before they could have children of their own. When the second accident took their son, they were too old to have more children. They were pretty old to have children when they did. This explains why she's searching for meaning and so desperately wanting to make waves at shadows. I can't say I blame them. I'd make an enemy out of thin air too if life gave me such a bad hand. At least I'm prepared for tomorrow's interviews. I have the one for the pop security and the private security that I've prattled on about for days. June 21st. Now, I don't want to jinx everything, but both interviews seem to go really well. I should hear back about the pop star security thing tomorrow, but the other long-term job might take a while. This definitely has picked up my spirits from the previous interviews. Both interviewers and I got into shop talk about security stuff. They seem to share many of the same opinions that I do about the profession. June 26th. The day after the last post, I heard back from both jobs. Neither wanted me. They both said I did something wrong during the interview, but refused to tell me what. 
I was going to revert into my old habit of cleaning 301 and watching Totally Spies, and I would have if Mr. Aiken didn't drop by right after that second disappointing call. A more superstitious person would say that it's fate or God or something. Regardless, I wasn't in a stable position, and I was acting somewhat catatonic as to not tear up when talking to him. I acted politely as I could in my state, but he wanted to talk about something rather strange. He was concerned Miss Robinson wasn't listening to them. The Aikens felt that they had experienced a break-in and continued to be stalked. Meanwhile, the police and the neighbors didn't pay attention. Knowing my profession, Mr. Aiken actually wanted to hire me and protect him and his wife. Not for a small amount of money, either. Something about Miss Robinson not listening to what they had been saying to her really spooked them. I doubted their story, but because of how I approached my job, how I approached my profession, I've been taking them seriously. So for the past few nights, I've guarded their house and their living room. I've installed some cheap security cameras to help me with the job. The job is temporary until the icons figure out what's going on. I don't think they can pay me this much forever. Something about this seems too good to be true. But I think I need to feel important at the moment. Rumors are circulating that Miss Robinson isn't happy with my new position. And it's almost making me believe that the Icon story is true. That something is up. That something is wrong. June 27th. Someone was in the backyard last night. Not an animal. A person. But here's the real problem. I didn't notice it at the time. Mr. Icon asked me to view the footage of the backyard and both views showed a figure coming in from the direction of my house. After promising to do a better job to Mr. Aiken and assuring him that he's in safe hands, I went to talk to my roommates. They got mad when I asked. They jumped the gun. I wasn't accusing them of anything. Considering I haven't been around the house much, I wonder if I told them when I was leaving. It feels like we've grown apart in less than a week. Then I talked to the police and alerted the neighborhood watch, and what do you know, they aren't listening. Now it's starting to seem like this job isn't too good to be true. I have some real work ahead of me. June 30th. I haven't been doing much besides guarding. I don't want to let down the icons. They've been so nice to me. I've been sleeping in their guest room. I think I'll tell my roommates tomorrow that I'm moving out. I don't have much to move out. My PC and 301 are the only things that are important to me, and they're here by my side. July 1st. No leads on anything. I'm stuck in this job. July 2nd. No sign of the figure. Busy working. July 3rd. Nothing. It's happening. July 4th. I'm standing over the icons with 301. They are asleep. The fireworks are loud, but useful 